Today's ride is from Stanley to Tulla via the Western Explorer. They call it the Wild Wild West. But anyway, we're going to go across the Pyman River on the Fatman Barge. The crossover point is at Carina, and from there we'll visit the Reese Dam onto Rosebury before heading back to the Tulla Lakeside Lodge. Like day one, we stop off at the Shell Station at Smithton, grab a bit of fuel and a few snacks to eat along the way, before heading off on the Tarkeen Drive. The difference today is we take a bit of a shortcut. Instead of going right round the Tarkeen Drive, which is the magnificent twisties, we make a right-hand turn on this road which is relatively straight you wouldn't normally ride this way but it takes you through roger river and gets you the quicker way towards the western explorer you wouldn't normally go this way you'd definitely go back there a left past the Teoti bridge and stick on the tart Tarkine Drive with the magnificent twisties, but this way cut us straight across and we rejoin the Tarkine Drive on the other side of this bridge and we go right. So in yesterday's ride, you would have saw it if you've seen that coming from the left here and we go virtually straight ahead where we're about to turn. From this point, you still get 17 kilometers of great twisties on Blackwater Road, which is the Tarkeen Drive. These are generally more free flowing sweepers on a very, very good surface. You'll notice of the few white painted strips on the road. These are called rumble strips and they're there to help the habitat from knowing that there's a vehicle approaching and maybe they don't run out in front of it. So yeah, just trying to protect this local habitat. So here's the turn off onto Norfolk Road, otherwise known as the Western Explorer Road. And this is about 80 kilometers down to Carina. The sign's basically saying that there's a paid ferry that will get you across to a Zeon at Carina. Norfolk Road starts off pretty straight and it's also quite dusty. The sign here indicates that it's going to take about one and a half hours to Carina. That works out at about 55 kilometers per hour on average. So uh, that sort of means it's not going to be straight all the way. This road is part of the Tarkeen region. The left hand side known as the Tarkeen Wilderness or the eastern side, it's been preserved because of its a vast range of threatened or endangered plants and animals. There wasn't much around so we thought it was safe enough to stop for a quick drink. The weather was warming up and because it was so dusty we thought it might be better if Tony was riding out the front she'd uh, take the camera so from now on Tony's wearing the camera. The roads become a heap more interesting, meandering through an array of different landscapes, cutting through the world's largest remaining piece of a temperate rainforest, where the high rainfall and the cool weather has created a diverse and stunning areas. Every now and then there's a small sealed section. It's generally where it might be steeper down the hill or around some sharper bends, but uh, generally it's there to for make the corners a little safer. And once you start getting closer to the mountains, you start doing climbs up and down and the undulating roads around the bends, it becomes a fantastic ride. So this is why the Western Explorer is so popular.
there's often evidence of grading of the road with you can see the dirt pushed on each side i'd say this road's pretty well looked after and yes there were a couple of cars and vans going in the other direction and the ride started getting really nice when you could see the mountains over in the far distance and the road out in front of you undulating around the corners are just beautiful We certainly thought this was a pretty easy riding road and here comes a caravan in the other direction and while well, he's going to leave a lot of dust behind which you ride through and yeah that actually takes quite a while for that dust to clear but you know you can see how the road's changing a lot now and we're getting closer to Mount Edith the highest of all the mountains in the area at 740 meters another one of those well it's a steeper section and you've got the bitumen down to the bottom where there'll probably be a bridge at the bottom in this time and yeah, across the bridge Donaldson River You can see how the further you go east, the environment continues to change, crossing another little river. Beautiful day, nice blue sky, a few clouds around, but that, that actually would have just helped with the heat. It was a very warm day. At this stage we're approaching Mount Edith, you can see it through the trees there and it certainly does stand out amongst the other mountains. The sign we're approaching there suggests a falling rock area ahead. Most of the road's pretty wide, it does have a few sections of little areas where it's a little narrower. But uh, the, maybe our, e, our Midas E07 Plus tyres certainly didn't give us any feelings that it was slippery at all. You can see how the riding scenery does differ from place to place. And we're getting closer now to a, a, one of our, like our second stop where we're going to stop for a drink. And this is the Donaldson River Lookout. Again, you can see how vast the area is. You can see the road right over on the left and ahead of us again here. Steeper, so it's a sealed section. That's what I think it might be. And up over the mountains, beautiful riding, actually. In typical Tasmanian style, you get this slight downhill, nice set of twisties. About three kilometres before you reach Karina Road, you cross over this bridge which crosses Savage River and you continue a little bit more dirt riding to Karina Road where we're going to go right, which will take us to the Pyman River Ferry. And if you go left, it takes you to Savage River. It starts off again, similar road, dirt, gravel road, but becomes one of Tasmania's best sealed twisty roads you can possibly ride. It's interesting, uh, Zian's 51 kilometers the way we're going over, over the ferry, but it's 150 kilometers if you want to go the other way back towards Waratah. As you're near Karina, it almost looks like you're going for a rainforest and you're close to the big tall trees and uh, the riding is still very, very nice. But you come into Karina and yes, now you're seeing civilization. We got a bit of a shock actually because hadn't seen hardly anyone a couple of caravans and maybe one car and all of a sudden the place was packed and the queue to get on the ferry was massive we waited well we waited quite a fair amount of time mate certainly over a half an hour and um, we were very lucky to get on there's a four-wheel drive that didn't fit on the ferry you can only fit two vehicles or a car and a van at a time and there was a four-wheel drive that was too heavy so he backed off and we rode straight on and away we went and the guys who were taking us across were happy to get the three bikes on yeah 
Yeah, it's a nice little crossing over the Pyman River, and we're back onto Crina Road, and it's sealed for a while. We sort of thought at this stage, oh, well, and, and it's actually good quality surface, and we thought that the rest of the Crina Road was going to be sealed, and indeed it wasn't. It, it's... Uh, Again, beautiful Tasmania, nice surface, nice twisties, it was very good. Uh, and, you know, we weren't unhappy, it was sealed for a while, and then back to some dirt riding. And this last dirt section of Corinna Road all the way to Heemskirk Road, it was again pretty wide, so it's you know, you feel a lot safer when the road's so wide because you never know what's going to come around the other way. But there wasn't traffic heading in the other direction. You get to this T intersection, Heemskirk Road, right takes you to Zin, which we weren't going to, left to well, Reese Dam first, which we did a stop for a drink and a, something to eat again. And um, we're going on to Rosebury to get some fuel and going then back to Tulla for the where we're staying for a couple of nights. Short ride down to Reese Dam's nice ride, it's good surface again, and a few twisties to take you all the way. We had a short stop, snack and a drink, and uh, while we were uh, sitting there, about 15 local Tassie riders all rode by. They went in the other direction from us, back across this bridge and heading towards Zian. Uh, we crossed over, continued on, and we get to the other side, and every day we kept on bumping into this guy. We bumped into him getting on to the Spirit of Tasmania, and here he was again, um, parked on the side, He's on his KTM, and I think this is him walking across the bridge. Yeah, that's him. Tony gives him a wave, yeah, sees him again. So, yeah, just interesting. After you cross the dam wall, the road becomes Pyman Road. And this is another one of Tassie's great roads to ride. You can obviously ride this one in both directions because it's, it's sealed. So for the people who don't want to do dirt, um, but this is a great ride. The surface, uh, we've done it before and it was a little bit bumpy, but it was a lot better. I thought it was in good condition overall. And yeah, just yet another great ride in Tassie. I mentioned before we were heading for the Tulla Lakeside Lodge and the point with this place is it's on a beautiful area on the river and it's what's called um, budget accommodation and the rooms are small but golly it's got to be a great place to stay that's for sure. So this is now we're back on the A10 the Murchison Highway we go down into Rosebury to get our fuel for tomorrow's riding and back to the Tulla for a nice walk a few drinks and a feed.